right now. They fell victim to a new type of crime called jugging. The Bear County Sheriff's Office with a warning about it coming up. It's one of the big moves made in D.C. today. The U.S. Supreme Court rules in favor of a business to not create a wedding website for an LGBTQ couple. What local business owners have to say about that decision. But first, a man went to a store, bought an expensive watch, and then went home. Ordinarily, the story should end there, but it doesn't because in this case, thieves followed him back home. Yeah, and unfortunately, we're hearing stories like this more and more often. It is a new crime trend known as jugging, a form of robbery where criminals follow the victim from one location to another. The night team's Patty Santos talks to a victim who's still traumatized by the entire experience. I didn't feel that I was the type of person that would become a victim. That's why when John picked up a luxury watch from the shops at La Cantera, getting robbed wasn't on his mind. Picked up the watch and walked out of this store at La Cantera. Ended up going from that store to go have dinner with the family and still had no idea and was completely unaware that I had become a mark. Thieves waited for over an hour and a half and followed him miles away to his driveway where he was held up at gunpoint. It's extremely dangerous when you have weapons pointed straight at you and you have no idea what they're going to do or what their intentions are. Just a week before, Bear County Sheriff investigators say thieves in this SUV followed a man from a bank carrying a hefty withdrawal only to have it stolen when he parked in his driveway. So we're seeing them become more sophisticated. Sheriff Javier Salazar says thieves are becoming more sophisticated with their moving surveillance and showing patience with their targets. I think a little bit of, of paranoia is a good thing. Um, I would always encourage and I'm going to give the public the same advice that I give my own children uh, is you, you never want to become too predictable in your patterns. If you're leaving the store or maybe even the bank and you think someone's following you, the sheriff says make a few loops around the street and if you still can't get rid of that vehicle, and call 911. Don't walk out of the bank carrying that, that envelope. You, you stick it in your pocket, you stick it in the front pocket. Uh, there's, a, there's a bunch of other things that you could do to, to not be such an easy target. John had no idea this is the way thieves are operating, but says next time he'll be ready. What it's done to us has made us very prepared. We are prepared. We are lucky now. And uh, our community is lucky now. So our community has come together also. And he says this has really affected his whole family and their sense of security, but he really wanted to share this story to alert our community. You spoke with the sheriff there. What else can we do to protect ourselves, Patty? Well, law enforcement says everyone can keep an eye out for each other. If you see someone suspiciously mm -hmm. sitting in a vehicle in a parking lot for no particular reason, be suspicious and maybe alert authorities and call 911. Patty. Thank you. Sometimes being paranoid, not a bad thing. Exactly. Yeah. It's true. Thank you, Patty. To others now. He was her boyfriend. Now he's been sentenced to 20 years in prison, found guilty in the death of his one-time girlfriend, Kaylee Mandati. The 19-year-old Trinity University student died of blunt force trauma in 2017. Mark Howerton, who was initially found not guilty on a murder charge, was convicted on the lesser charge of aggravated assault. The 20-year sentence, the maximum punishment possible. Kaylee and Howerton were involved in what friends described as an abusive relationship. In a statement, Bear County District Attorney Joe Gonzalez says Kaylee's death is a tragic reminder that domestic violence has devastating consequences. Howerton must serve half of his 20 year sentence before he's eligible for parole. A local child psychologist accused of indecency with a child died before getting his day in court. We're told that 44 year old Dr. Timothy Kimball died last Friday. He was set to have a pretrial conference on July 13th for allegedly violating a protective order that stemmed from his indecency arrest back in August 24th of last year. San Antonio police say the mother of Kimball's alleged victim had found a hidden camera in her daughter's room. Kimball later admitted to recording the victim. But right now, we don't know how he died. The search continues tonight for the driver who hit a woman, then left her to die on the side of the road this morning. It happened just after midnight at South Flores Street and Genevieve. That's near Southwest Military Drive. Police say the woman was pronounced dead at the scene. Right now, officers don't have any suspects.
Tonight, family and friends coming together to say goodbye to the woman who was killed by San Antonio police officers last week. We're talking about 46 year old Melissa Bettis. She was shot in her apartment on Old Pearsall Road last Friday. Her family didn't speak with the media today, but they did share pictures of a memorial service through the Packard law firm. Now, last Friday, Sergeant Alfred Torre Flores, Officer Eliezer Alejandro, and Officer Nathaniel Villalobos shot and killed Perez. SAPD terminated all three. Now they're charged. Police Chief William McManus said that Perez was having some sort of a mental health crisis at the time and that the officers did not follow department training. It's a decision many were waiting for. The United States Supreme Court has effectively killed President Joe Biden's $400 billion plan to cancel or reduce federal student loan debts for millions of Americans. That plan challenged in court by a group of Republican-led states and others. The court ruled today the Biden administration overstepped its authority in trying to cancel or reduce the student loan debt. Following the ruling, the president said, quote, this fight is not over and his administration will be moving forward with a new relief plan. Area lawmakers reacted to the Supreme Court's ruling today. Senator John Cornyn released a statement saying in part, quote, I'm glad to see this disastrous policy struck down, and I urge Senate Democrats to work with Republicans on common sense solutions to make higher education more affordable. And Representative Lloyd Doggett also reacting to the news. Doggett says in part, quote, this decision will not deter our efforts to overcome GOP obstruction and make higher education more affordable while providing relief to Americans as they continue to bounce back from the pandemic, end quote. So that wasn't the only decision out of D.C. today. The end of Pride Month comes with a new Supreme Court ruling. Businesses can now deny service to LGBTQ plus customers citing free speech rights under the First Amendment. The night team's Avery Ever joins us live from the strip on Main Street. Avery, the Supreme Court gave its opinion. Well, now Texans are sharing theirs. Well, it's a victory to some and a loss for others. For people we've been talking to here along the gay strip tonight, they say Pride Month pushed them to be their authentic selves. And now this decision is pushing them to fight for their freedoms. The rainbow paint along Main Street is starting to fade. But Randy Cuniff says the pride in this strip is far from it. I don't think that anybody's going to stop. I know we're not. On the last day of Pride Month, the Supreme Court changed legal precedent, ruling businesses across the U.S. can refuse service to LGBTQ plus customers. Justice Neil Gorsuch says this falls under free speech in the First Amendment. Tonight, Senator Ted Cruz applauding the decision, posting on Twitter that this is a victory for the Constitution and religious liberty. Cruz sent in a legal opinion just a year ago for this case in support of free speech. 20 senators and 38 members of the U.S. House of Representatives supported that statement, with Cruz saying this ruling would ensure Americans can pursue their work without compromising their religion. McConiff, who owns four out of the five bars on Main Street, says this decision is disappointing. And now we're just rapidly moving backwards. This ruling aligns with a political spotlight that's already focusing in on the rights of the LGBTQ plus community. And here in Texas, we can actually see some of this legislation take effect on September 1st, including Senate Bill 14 that restricts transgender youth from accessing transition related care. We've had a pretty horrible year, um, especially with the Texas legislator. Robert Salcedo Jr. with Pride Center SA says this decision won't erase the LGBTQ plus community. You can't do it. We're, we're everywhere. We're part of every community. But he says it's giving him power to push forward. There's still a lot of work to be done. Um, and as a community, we know that we um, in the past have come together to unite and to be one with one another. And we're going to continue to do that. Just this year alone, the ACLU reported more than 500 anti-LGBTQ plus bills have been brought up across the country. To see what other bills take effect on September 1st here in Texas, you can check out KSAT.com. Reporting live, I'm Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Avery, thank you. And now for a look at some of today's big headlines in your night beat news flash. The Biden administration now moving forward with plans for Medicare to negotiate directly with drug makers Despite several lawsuits, the agency released new guidelines for its program on how it selects the first set of medications. Medicare is going to announce the first 10 drugs that have been selected for negotiation by September 1st, and then it says it's going to agree on prices for them by 2026. However, two pharmaceutical filed lawsuits against Medicare argued that the program is unconstitutional. 
Little Miss Sunshine Oscar award winning actor Alan Arkin is dead. His family released a statement saying so this week. Arkin's career spanning more than seven decades and with stints in movies like Argo and Going in Style, he was known as one of Hollywood's most versatile actors. Alan Arkin was 89 years old. And that's a look at your Nightbeat News Flash. Now, TxDOT is celebrating the end of a project aimed at making driving just a little smoother on Highway 281. Yeah, it's a big change. This morning it held a ribbon cutting ceremony to mark finishing phase two of the 281 North expansion project. It stretches from Stone Oak Parkway to Borgfeld Road in the far north part of Bear County. Texas transportation officials hope this will ease traffic jams on the highway as the population in the county continues to grow. And as we get ready to start a new month, there are several KSAT community events we want to let you know about. We're teaming up with our KSAT community partners for a phone bank on July 20th, all in support of Project MEND. Yeah, the information's right there on your screen. Project MEND works to improve the quality of life for those living with disabilities and illnesses through refurbishment, reuse, and the redistribution of medical equipment and other technology. Pack your patience if you're flying out of town this 4th of July weekend. Many Americans left stranded this week because of canceled or delayed flights. What you can expect when you head to the airport. Friends, sorry to tell you, but patience is going to be important this 4th of July holiday because, yes, friends, there is some travel trouble. Hundreds of thousands of airline passengers across the country got stranded this week. About 4,500 flights have been canceled over the last three days. Part of it is the weather. There are also staff shortages with airliners and air traffic controllers. So here's the deal. If you're in a bind, one expert says that you should call your airline's international number. You know, just because um, you're located in the U.S. doesn't mean that someone working for the same airline located in London, for example, couldn't help you just the same. They have the same access and can get you rebooked. Something else to consider. Yeah, earlier today, dozens of flights were delayed at the San Antonio International Airport, but we just checked about an hour ago, and at least for tomorrow, most of the departing flights at the airport are running on schedule. Well, that's good news. So if you're staying in San Antonio over the holiday weekend, plenty for you to do here. Local influencer Stephanie Guetta actually stopped by our studio in our 6 o'clock show, like she does on Fridays, to give us some ideas on what you can do if you were out and about this weekend. This kicks off this weekend a new exhibit called Still Brewing Art, and it is going to be this amazing historic to modern day exhibit of beer culture in San Antonio. Yeah, the San Antonio Museum of Art, which was once the Lone Star Brewery. Okay. Yeah, so it's appropriate they have a beer themed art exhibit from now until September 3rd. Something else going on out in Cibolo with Santicos Entertainment. They're ending their Beats and Brews series with a concert tomorrow. They're going to have artists Autumn Michelle and Nikki Diamonds performing. For more information on the events, you can go to, you can watch today's Pure Picks video on the homepage of KSAT.com. I Stephanie, love her. Always she fun. always knows about all the good things that are going on every single weekend. Well, things that aren't, you might not know about. Yeah. yeah she's great at, she's great at bringing some of those out. At, yeah. At the neighborhood level. That's absolutely. what I love about it. Yeah, Very absolutely. It's like, you local. know what's ha happening at Fiesta Texas and Six Flags and you know, Sea World, all that stuff, but this is off the beaten path stuff. And she happens to equate them with breweries a lot. <laughs> she does, and I know that's the way to your heart, Mike. It friend. is, yes. Yep. Different styles of beer. That's the way we're, that's what we're talking about. Now, temperatures <laughs> are gonna be dropping off a little bit in the days ahead. Not a lot. Keep in mind it's almost July in South Central Texas, so we're not gonna have a big temperature drop, but this beats 105 that we had several times just days ago. Take a look at our trend, 99 tomorrow, upper 90s through the weekend. And then by the middle part of next week, we're down into the mid 90s. Today, we did briefly for 10 minutes, hit 100 degrees here in San Antonio. Look at Del Rio, only 103. It's a far cry from the 100 teens they had just a few days ago. Now, this is the big picture and you see the red and pink colors. The hottest, some of the hottest temperatures and hottest air in the lower 48 because of the heat high pushing down. So 100 the high in Little Rock, right near 100 underneath the heat high. Now, speaking of 100, I have to point this out. Las Vegas actually made it to 102. They broke a 294 day streak 
of sub one of of sub 100 degree temperatures. So they went so long without hitting triple digits. Meanwhile, around here, uh, we've had our handful already. Not like last summer, but we've already had our, our handful. All right, take a look at the heat high, how it has pushed eastward. It's now centered over Louisiana, and it shows it's opened the door for some showers and storms in West Texas all the way up into the Panhandle. And this is some good soaking rainfall. A few isolated severe storms have been within it, but overall, this is good soaking rain. I wish I could tell you we're going to get the leftovers of that. It's just not going to happen. This will continue to fall apart as it drifts east along I-20 there. And the main alleyway for severe storms is along the north edge, along the periphery here of that upper level heat high. Now, one thing it's been doing us a favor is actually keeping the smoke away. See the greens here? That's the smoke that's in the atmosphere from the Canadian wildfires. And we've been talking about this for weeks, but with the heat high overhead, over the past three weeks, it has really kept that smoke away from us, whereas it's made it all the way down into parts of the central part of the plains and the Great Lakes region. And as this upper level heat high weakens, it's not going to really open the door for the smoke to get our in our neck of the woods. I do think we'll have some dust. I'll get to that in a moment. But first, our rain chances up to 20 percent, that upper level high weakening. 20% chance just about every day next week. I think slightly better odds closer to the Gulf Coast, but uh, don't get too excited about it. As for the African dust, this is our forecast, and it does show that we could have some of this dust make it here by Wednesday of next week. It works its way into the Gulf of Mexico, and we may notice some of it on Wednesday. As for tomorrow, a lot like today, a mixture of sun and cloud, 77 at 7 a.m., 99 the high, feeling like 104, southeast wind at 10 to 15, if you are headed to the beach and bay, there will be a bit of a chop on the bays and uh, two to four foot waves along the beach. Tomorrow afternoon, right near 100, but most of us in the upper 90s, even some mid 90s out there. Leon Springs, Timberwood Park, 96, Von Army, Elmendorf, 99, upper 90s, pretty much carbon copy days, Saturday and Sunday. And I know the rain chances aren't great next week, but if you are a little bit closer to the Gulf Coast, I think you have slightly better chances of seeing some of those showers that pop up. By the way, with the cirrus clouds made of ice in our sky today, you may have noticed the halo around the sun that's caused by the refrigerator fraction of sunlight through those ice crystals. The light actually bends twice through those crystals. And so we see this periodically when we get those high clouds and cash. He's back soaking it up, <laughs> acting like a diva now that he's been on case yeah, three times. I know he needs an agent. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> a good boy. Yeah, your cash. Hi, Larry. I have Hello. a question for you. Yes. What would you do with $20 million? Ooh, you'd sign Trey Jones. I'd sign Trey Jones. <laughs> I'd probably give a lot of it to my family. Maybe put a little bit away. Co-workers. Buy some baseball cards. Give you two some money. Yeah, yeah I you like know. that. That's what I'm yeah. Talking about. yeah. So yeah. hey, Trey Jones, according to reports, signed a two-year, twenty million dollar deal to stay with the Spurs. Meanwhile, when Minyama talks pop, how is he with the teenager? Plus, SAFC is getting other teams' best shots this year. Coming up. I tell the players this is an absolute privilege as well that we're getting everybody's best game, A game. Ellen Marcina and SAFC have no problem getting everybody's best shot in big board sports. All right, life is calming down a bit for Victor Wimanyama as he settles in with the San Antonio Spurs. Getting drafted number one overall is awesome, but certainly puts a lot more on one's plate. Plus, not only is Wimby getting used to a new city and teammates, but he's also adjusting to a new floor boss and Greg Popovich. So what are Wimby's early impressions of Coach Pop? He's, uh, he works out more than I thought. You know, <laughs> every morning he's there running on a treadmill, lifting weights. Um, other than that, he's really, he communicates a lot with me and he doesn't want me to make, uh, you know, he wants to take care of me and he wants to avoid me making some mistakes and it's, uh, it's a really, he's really present and it's, uh, it's really comfortable. Wimby added that defense is the first principle the team is being taught. Johnson Jaguars junior quarterback Ty Hawkins is one of the top QBs in the class of 2025 and recently he gave his verbal commitment to TCU. He's a four star QB and very much a dual threat. Today we met with him to talk about his verbal commitment to the Horn Frogs. 
I just love the school. I love the coaching staff and everything about it. I feel like making my decision a little bit earlier is a little different for most people, mm -hmm. but I, I really like it and I think I could stick with it for the rest of my years of high school. And then when I get to TCU, I'll, I'll be able to like build my team around me because I'm already committed so I can try and get other people to commit also. So I think it's just like a, I think it's also like the perfect fit for me. Okay. Just their scheme that they run and our scheme we run at Johnson, it just, it just fits. So you don't feel it's too early for you to commit and you still have two years left in high school? No, sir. I don't feel like it's too early at all. Okay. Um, I feel like now that I'm committed, the, the bond with the coaching staff and the OC, Coach Bryles, mm -hmm. and me is just going to grow and get better and better. And with time, it just like it's going to be good. Yes, sir. Can you expand on that relationship with Coach Bryles? Uh, I read some stuff online that you two really connected. Yes, sir. Um, so when like he came to the school for the first time, um, we talked. I really liked him, and he offered me then. And then when I took my visit, I, I really enjoyed him. Me and my mom loved him. Ty says the recruiting process was kind of painful and that he's glad it's over with. Heading into their home match this Saturday, San Antonio FC sits fourth in the USL Championship Western Conference with 25 points. As head coach Alan Marcina said, they're getting everybody's best shot. Now Birmingham Legion FC is bringing their A game to town to face the reigning champs. You know, at the same time, like all teams, they have their strengths, they have their areas that uh, we want to exploit and, and we want to try to turn them. And, we have to be ultra aggressive. We know that every opponent that we play, this is their match of the year. Mm -hmm. This is a fact. When you are the reigning champions, everybody's bringing their A game against you. So sometimes it's more than just tactics. Um, it's about the intensity, the aggressiveness, the, the, the grit. Um, and it has to be more and more of it. We've been very good, don't get me wrong, on those, uh, those perspectives. Um, but we still have to give more. SAFC will host the Birmingham Legion FC Saturday night at 8 at Toyota Field. Josh Young and the Rangers making history after the break. The Texas Rangers made franchise history having four players named All-Star Game starters, and they are Marcus Simeon, Corey Seager, Jonah Heim, and San Antonio's very own third baseman Josh Young. The McAlum is the first Rangers rookie to start an All-Star Game since the franchise moved to Texas in 1972. It's really just really special. Um, you look back on it and you dream about it and to do it in my first season is truly amazing. How excited are you to have uh, so many of your teammates there with you, especially in the infield? <laughs> I mean, we pretty much got the whole infield. Uh, I mean, that's going to be just super fun to share with those guys. Rangers hosting the Astros tonight to start a four-game series at Globe Life Field. Bottom of the fourth tied at one when Josh Young unties the game with a solo homer to right field. And it's 2-1 to one Rangers, his 17th home run of the season. But Houston comes back, tied five. Mauricio Dubon comes through with a two-run double to left field. And the Astros take game one by a final of 5-3. to three. And in the Texas League tonight, the Missions beat the Rough Riders 10-3. Handily. Yes, right. roughed up the Rough Riders. We'll be right back. All right, let's say you want to celebrate the 4th of July, but big crowds, loud noises, long lines, not your thing. Well, you can still partake in all the fun without ever leaving your home thanks to virtual reality. Yes, an Oklahoma-based tech company called Human Mode created a social metaverse platform where people can enjoy virtual celebrations. In the digitized Freedom Fest world, you'll be able to experience the best of the 4th of July from setting off fireworks, riding a jet ski and a Ferris wheel, and also playing games. But, you know, there's nothing like the real thing. Yeah. Sorry. But you uh, probably have to have one of those yeah. headset things. I would just, I hope you could hack it to where you could just take everything and light it all out at once, like out of your hands in that universe, whatever it's called. Yeah. Well, you know. that one thing where they like set off with look like a Roman candle, but it was much yeah. bigger than a Roman candle. That's what I mean. Candle. We need more of them. Yeah. That'd be rowdy. That'd be rowdy. Have a great weekend. Happy 4th.